So you are probably wondering what the title of this video means. I mean, aren't smartphones a commodity already? Everyone has one after all. But that's not the only defining factor here. Hey, I'm Brian, and this is how smartphones are just becoming a commodity. Welcome back to Explained and Talked About. To understand what the title of this video means, we first have to adjust what a commodity actually is by definition. According to Wikipedia, the term commodity is specifically used for an economic good or service when the demand for it has no qualitative differentiation across a market. Now this is definitely not true for smartphones. You do care which brand of smartphone you buy to a large extent. There are lots of differentiating factors. It's not like it doesn't really matter which brand you buy, like it doesn't with butter, for example. This doesn't mean that all butter is created equal, but just that it's not something you feel brand attachment for, like most people do with smartphones. You can walk into a store, buy a pack of butter, and be sure that all packs of butter will serve the same purpose no matter what the brand. Though personal preference, like taste for butter, still plays a role for commoditized items. That smartphones aren't commoditized yet is largely due to them being a pretty new category that hasn't had enough time to mature yet. There's still a lot of differentiation between phones and what they can do. It's not like you can just walk into a store and expect every phone at the same price point to perform the same and take the same great photos. But it's just natural that phones will become commoditized eventually. If they aren't replaced by something else faster than that can happen, that is. But it's also natural that this will take time. But which signs point to smartphones being in the process of commoditization then? One example is that smartphone CPUs used to be a big differentiating factor for phones. And to some extent, that is still true today. In combination with software, it does matter which CPU the phone you buy has. They don't just universally perform well at all tasks. But the chips in Apple's new phones are much faster than they need to be for day-to-day -day use. The A11 Bionic chip doesn't have this much power to make everyday tasks a phone needs to complete faster, the felt performance is actually indifferent to an A10, but to make extra features like AR and 4K video recording at 60fps possible. And the spare performance is actually only used in those applications. When more performance is only needed for extra features and everything else works anyway, CPU performance becomes an irrelevant metric like it has with the newest Apple devices and it will turn this direction for other phones too. And commoditization is also the reason why smartphones are moving up in price. If the core features like performance don't differentiate anymore, you need new ways to create categories. Those are the additional features like AR that I talked about before that are enabled by the faster CPU. And having all of the additional features will become a luxury, just like it has with other categories. But Martin from TechAltar did a way better job explaining that in his video over on Android Authority, which you can check out up at the info eye. In this way, I think that most phones will move more and more into the direction of PCs. By market share, most people in the developed world buy the highest end devices like the newest Galaxy S or iPhone. But with computers, only a very small amount of people owns a device with the fastest CPU in it. This hasn't been this way 20 years ago, because a slow CPU meant a genuinely bad user experience and a PC was a status symbol that not everyone had anyway. But these days, more than a basic CPU is only necessary for very specific workloads. So CPU performance has become a preference metric, not a needed one, at least for the average consumer. So what price of PC you buy solely depends on your workload. You don't need to buy a high-end PC to do basic tasks like it used to be. Smartphones are moving in this direction more and more, but they're not quite there yet. A big factor that commoditization makes disappear is differentiation. Whether you buy a phone from Motorola or Samsung does matter. They are very different in terms of their features for the same price. That's not to say that either is worse, but they're better at different things. This is the complete opposite with PCs. It doesn't matter whether you buy a PC from Dell or HP. If they cost the same, they will probably do the same things. All Windows laptops at a certain price basically have the same hardware. Tons of options with negligible differentiating metrics that have basically no status symbol appeal. That's the way it will go for Android smartphones. Wait, did I just specify Android? I did because one exception to the commoditization of PCs, and it looks like also the starting commoditization of phones, is Apple. This is why Macs still have a status symbol appeal when all other PCs lack it. 
You can say what you want about Apple, but they sure do this well. And that's a good business. This is because commoditization is actually better for the consumer than it is for manufacturers. Commoditization is great for you because it makes a category universally more mature, so you can get an up-to-par experience whichever inexpensive version of the product you buy. But manufacturers want you to buy their high-end products, which is why Apple didn't let commoditization happen to their Macs. And you can see that others want to counteract this trend too. Just look at Microsoft's efforts with their Surface lineup. They have managed to create a Windows computer that has a sort of brand recognition again. So you can see what commoditization means for a category and how smartphones are on the way there, but not quite there yet. It will be interesting to see how this all moves forward in the future in regards to how devices will mature and how manufacturers might want to work against the commoditization, unless the smartphone is replaced by something else faster than that can happen that is, like I mentioned before. The PC wasn't replaced by the smartphone, but it will be interesting to see what AR does to the smartphone market. But until then, we can just enjoy more and more mature devices. I wanted to make this video because it's what I got reminded of when I first read about the performance of Apple's new A11 chips, and I found it very interesting. But you can let me know what you think in the comments down below. And remember that there are some buttons you can press to help me out, and you should not forget that follow button on Twitter. I'm Brian, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.